In this video I'm going to set up and use an AVR Dragon to program an 80 Mega 328 microcontroller. The AVR Dragon is an in-system debugger for Atmel AVR microcontrollers. It's very low cost, this one was about 50 euro, and it's quite a powerful device. It can be used to debug devices with OCD, which is on-chip debug, using SPI, JTAG, PDI, high voltage serial programming, parallel programming and so on. In this video I'm going to use SPI and DebugWire. You would need a device like this if you intend to move beyond the Arduino, for example to create commercial devices or to really understand and optimize the code that you're writing. The debug functionality also allows you to find difficult errors in your code. In a previous video I set up a circuit called Arduino on a breadboard where we took the Arduino IC or the AT Mega 328 from the Arduino Shield and placed it on a breadboard. Then using an external crystal, a couple of load capacitors and a reset button I was able to get the Arduino working independent of the Shield. Now to program this we used the Arduino Shield without the IC. Because it had the bootloader, the Arduino bootloader, we were able to connect the ORX and TX pins from the blank Arduino shield and the reset button from the blank Arduino shield to the AT Mega 328 and program it using the regular Arduino environment. Now the problem is a blank AT Mega 328, for example, doesn't have the bootloader on it by default. And here's where the AVR Dragon comes in. We could burn a bootloader to the IC and use it as an Arduino or we could use it without the Arduino environment at all and program it directly using GCC, AVR GCC or directly in assembler language. So here's the AVR Dragon board as it ships. It's a, a small enough board as you can see, it comes in a very fancy box and you'll see that there's a prototyping area on the right hand side. On the left hand side it plugs into USB directly. Now the problem is that the prototyping environment doesn't necessarily suit us. So something like this, a 40 pin ZIF socket is very useful. We can solder this directly to the right hand side to the prototyping environment along with some male headers like this and this will allow us to program the device directly on the AVR Dragon board or else use the male headers and run using female leads and connect it into our breadboard and program in circuit. I also like to place these rubber feet on the back of any board like this that's outside of a case. In case there's any metal lying on your worktop, it'll just stop that metal from shorting across the pins on the back of your board. The first thing to do is to cut the male headers to length. In this case here, for the high voltage programming area, we need to, we need to add in male headers. We also need to add in male headers for the pins that connect to our ZIF socket. Now I found that after I cut these to length, I sat them in the board using a female header to keep them perpendicular before I soldered. Finally we need to connect in the ZIF socket. This ZIF socket was about 10 euro from um, DigiKey and it sits very neatly in the board. It seems to be a very high quality. I connected that in into the board. You can see the pins there. And then I soldered across the pins, the 40 pins on the ZIF socket. Okay, so that's the board soldered and you can see the pins are well anchored. Finally I just need to clean this. I'm using a bit of PCB cleaning solvent and just across all the pins to get rid of the flux and then the board is ready for use and so you can see the ZIF socket is well seated on the board again I think a good quality ZIF socket makes sense the, the rubber feet also will keep the pins away from uh, the ground so there's our AVR Dragon it's ready for use um, the next thing we can do is drop in an 80 Mega IC directly into the ZIF socket so here's an 80 Mega 328 just drop it in with pin 1 to the bottom and then you can just pull the little lever and it's ready to go. Finally I just modified the box that it came in a little bit just to provide me with a case to store the AVR in and even you can even use it within this. It just involved using a, a Stanley knife or a, a blade just to cut the edges of the box and it sits very well. It's a good sturdy box and I think this is worth doing again just to keep the AVR Dragon safe. One thing that's worth mentioning is that you shouldn't plug in your AVR Dragon into the USB port until you've installed AVR Studio. You can install AVR Studio 4 or 5 from the Atmel website, atmel.com website. 
I prefer AVR Studio 4 at the moment and I use that in the next video to show you how to write some code. In this example here I'm going to show you AVR Studio 5 but I found that there were problems with debug wire with AVR Studio 5 and the AVR Dragon. AVR Studio 5 is a very large download, about a half of a gigabyte. It uses a .NET framework so you could maybe download that while you're doing your soldering. Here's the wiring diagram for ISP and debug wire programming. This is the most common way to program and develop with the AVR. The ISP header is used for both in-system programming and the bug wire OCD. The colors here that are used in the diagram simply match the female to female header leads that I had to hand. These pins on the ZIF socket also correspond directly to the same pins on the AT Mega. So you can run the same wires directly to the breadboard and you can even power the circuit providing you don't exceed 300 milliamps. You just have to be careful that there's a large pull-up resistor, about 10k or greater, and that there's no capacitive load on pin 1, or you'll have problems with debug wire. Here's an example of AVR Studio 5 Beta 2, and this simple application, I'll show you how to write an application in the next video using AVR Studio 4, and we'll go through this step by step, but here's an example application that we can use to test that we're programming correctly. It simply lights an LED on PB1 and it's able to turn the LED on and off for one second. Once we have that application in place we can build it so we go to build and then we build our application you can see the output in the output window below. So here as we scroll through the window you can see that the application is 176 bytes in size for the AT Mega 328 so it's 0.5% full, so we can write a much larger application. Then when we're ready, we can go to Tools, AVR Programming, and before that we could go to the option above, which is to AVR Tools Firmware Upgrade, which allows us to upgrade the firmware on the AVR Dragon. But when we go to the Tools, AVR Programming, we can choose up in the top left-hand side, we can choose the 80 Mega IC that we want to use, we can choose ISP as our interface, and then we can connect directly to the IC. Make sure that the clock frequency, the ISP clock frequency, is set at less than a quarter of the frequency of the IC. The 80 mega can run at up to 20 megahertz, but by default it's set to 1 megahertz. So set it a fairly low frequency just to make sure it's working. You can get the target voltage, in this case it's 5 volts, and the device ID should also match. In this case we're using an 80 mega 328, it matches with that IC. We can see the fuse bits where we can decide if we're using an internal oscillator or not. Also the lock bits. And importantly, make sure you have none of these set before you go into the debug wire. So here's the memory section and we can erase the IC just to check that everything is working. It's working perfectly. And then we can choose the output of our build, which was the hexadecimal file. So we can browse to the directory and find the hexadecimal file from our build, avrgcc1.hex. And then we can program it directly onto the 80 Mega IC in a socket or directly on our breadboard. So in this case here you can see that it verified it worked perfectly. So now the program is loaded on, we can shut down this window. And you can see our application working directly on the target breadboard. So that's the programming of this device. You can see the LED flashing on and off, one second on, one second off and you can see the wiring that I've used to connect to this uh, IC. The crystal that's present on the breadboard at the moment isn't being used but it's there if I want to change the application I can use that external crystal. The alternative to programming the IC on the breadboard will be to take the AT Mega 328 and place it in the ZIF socket on your AVR Dragon. This would allow you to program the IC here and then place it onto the breadboard. Essentially the same wiring is used in both cases. So that's an example of the physical setup and wiring of the AVR Dragon of using it to program an AT Mega IC. In the next video, which you can follow at this link, I'm going to discuss in some detail how you can write an application using AVR Studio 4 and how you can use the bug wire mode to step through an application and see exactly what's happening within the IC.